Today I'm going to show you exactly how much cash flow options can make by selling put and cover call options as well as using poor man's covered calls. I will show you every trade we did last month in November and talk through three option trades that I think you're going to find interesting. One of those trades went really good for us but one of them has gone really bad for us. I'm going to share with you what we've been and are doing to try and fix that position. And finally, I'm going to talk through the details of the poor man's cover call in Disney that has an interesting twist that's coming next month. And I want to get your input on that twist. This will help you see how you can use these same ops train techniques to consistently put cash flow in your account every single month. Here you see every ops trade we did last month in November. The red boxes are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. I will talk you through the naked put option that was assigned to us in Amgen. This is a position that has gone against us in a big way. But I think you'll be surprised, like I was, how trading options has really helped us out of a really bad situation. I will also talk through the poor man's covered call in Disney, in which we made several big moves and have an important decision to make next month, which I want to get your input on. Finally, I'll talk to you the grocery store put option position that we sold in Kroger, took a simple KR that paid us an over 50% annualized non-leverage return on capital. At the bottom of the sheet in the blue box, you see that as a result of selling options, we put a net of $14,426 cash into our pocket. In the orange box, you see that trading commission cost us $113.35. At the bottom left in the purple box, you see that the market data cost us $32.75. And at the bottom right in the green box, you see that we collected just over $709 in dividends from the four covered call positions that we are in. In all, as a result of buying and selling options, as well as collecting some dividends, we put a net of $14,989.70 into our pocket. If you annualize that return on the approximately one million capital that we had at risk, it equates to right at a 18.2% annualized non-leverage return on capital. If you're curious about what the return on the $167,331 margin requirement was, if you don't add in the margin for selling the short calls in the SP500, well that return equates to a 109% annualized return on margin. Based on the poll that you guys took, you want to see some trades that have gone against us and how we're handling them. So stay tuned in until the end of this video while I will share with you a trade that's really gone against us in a big way. Before that, the first trade I want to talk you through is one of the highest returning trades that we did last month. It's in the grocery store company Kroger. Here's what the daily and weekly chart looked like on the day that we sold put options in Kroger. Let me talk you through why we picked this trade. On October 25th, as you can see here on the daily chart, Kroger had declined from a recent high of around $48 per share and it had come down to right at this red 200 moving average, which was right around $39 per share. It bounced off that moving average pretty hard as you can see at the bottom and it did it on pretty good volume. I knew that there was a possibility that it would come back down to retest this previous support at the red trend and moving average, but I believe that with the strong buying pressure over the previous week, that it was more likely that if Kroger did come back down, it would find support at that moving average again. What made me feel even better about this trade was over on the weekly chart, notice that the downward momentum had slowed as it approached the green 50 moving average. Here you see that the volume bars have been quite high as the stock dropped in price. However, once it began to approach the green 50 moving average, that downward momentum stopped. I also noticed that over the long term, this green 50 moving average on the weekly chart, it tended to serve as support and resistance for Kroger. In fact, ever since the end of 2019, it had been serving as support for it. Because of these technical factors, I felt comfortable selling the $39 cash secured put options. For that, we were paid 50 cents per share for the first five contracts and 57 cents per share for the second five contracts. So in all, we put $535 into our pockets for selling those put option contracts. Well, how did it turn out? As we expected, Kroger did come back down, but it found support at that red 200 moving average seven days later. But then buying pressure kicked in and Kroger went from $39 per share to $43 per share. That was a 10% increase in just one week. Now there really wasn't any reason for us to exit this position except for the fact that from my personal experience, I know that when stocks make a big advance like what had just happened with Kroger, unless there's some brand new information that's pushing it higher, more than likely it will come back down to retest that area that had previously served as resistance for it. That area was right around $41 per share and was also right at the green 50 moving average here on the daily chart. In addition to that, the put options that we had sold, they were then only worth 10 cents per share. Since we had made over 81% of the potential profit in this position, we went ahead and closed this position out and put that capital back to work in a brand new position. It actually worked out to be a really good time to exit this position. The white arrow is the day that we exited. 
The next day, Kroger did go up a little bit more, but after that, it came back down to the green 50 moving average to test that previous wave's high and the green 50 moving average as we had expected. If we have made most of the profit in a position in a relatively short period of time, I always like to close the position out and put that capital back to work in a new position. By doing that, you're able to double up on your income and avoid the risk that the stock might come back down to test previous support and miss an opportunity to put more cash into your pocket on a new trade. The next trade I want to talk you through is the poor man's covered call and cash secured put and short call options in Disney. I mentioned to you in last month's video that we're attempting to roll our long January of 23 110 call option up and out. We had the order sitting out there for, if I remember correctly, it was about a month. Every day we'd adjust it by a nickel or a dime until finally on November 16th, the order got filled. As a result, we put into our pocket $7 per share or $700 for that trade. That alone is pretty awesome in my opinion. I was really happy to get that done. One of the reasons why I wanted to roll the call out and up is because Disney had just broke through support several days before this. Where you see the white arrow, that's the day that we rolled this leaps call option up and out in time. By rolling it up, we decreased how much our long-term call option would lose in value if Disney continued to decline in price. In hindsight, as of right now, it ended up being a pretty good move because Disney has continued to decline until recently, and it's actually down $10 per share from what it's trading at when we did this trade. The other trade we did in Disney hasn't turned out quite as good, but it was still a good trade when we did it in my opinion. Let me show you what I mean. Where you see the white arrow at on November 12th, after giving disappointing news at earnings time, Disney dropped over 7%. I knew that if it continued to decline, it'd become harder to get a good roll order filled. So I took advantage of this opportunity to roll the 170 call option down to right at the money with the 165 strike call option. I also simultaneously rolled the in the money 170 put option out and down to that same 165 strike price. One of the advantages of having this position that we're in now, a poor man's cover call along with a short put and call option, is that we can use the premium from the option that expires out of the money to move our in the money short option strike price around to put it more back into our favor. Because of that, we're able to really manipulate this position in Disney. Now since that time, Disney has continued to show weakness, but we are still 49 days out from the January expiration, so we're just going to stay in this position because it still has a lot of time value premium left in it. Maybe Disney will come back up, which would give us another opportunity to roll this for some really nice cash flow again in January. Now I mentioned earlier a twist to this position. Another important factor is the Leaps call option we sold almost two years ago when we first entered this poor man's covered call position in Disney. Here you see the January 21st of 2022 150 call option that we sold back in March of 2020. At that time, we were paid $4.34 per share for that option. As of the close of trading today, which is 49 days until this option expires, that option only had gone up in value $1.15 per share. If Disney stays where it's at now, at just over $146 per share, we will pocket that $550 because this option will expire worthless. I've been telling you guys in my monthly cash flow video that I was trying to get out of this second call option, but honestly, it's gone so well for us that I'm considering selling another farther out of the money leaps call option that expires in about 12 months or maybe even longer. But what are your thoughts on that subject? In the comments below, let me know if you think that we should exit this short January 150 call option altogether to do away with this extra short call option or if you think that we should roll the second call option that expires in January out to another year or maybe even two years out in time. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I would love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. I'm now going to share with you one of our positions that's gone against us in a pretty big way. I'm going to show you where the position is currently stands, what we've been doing to try to improve the position, and what our plans are for the future. Amgen, ticker symbol AMGN, is a biotechnology healthcare company that I really like. As you can see here, we've been selling options at Amgen since January of 2021. I mean, it all started out pretty awesome. Where you see the white arrow on the left of the chart, that's January 14th when we sold our first put option in Amgen. Everything went along nicely. Amgen would go up and come back down, and we'd sell put options and pocket some nice cash. Overall, we were doing very well with this position. However, as you can see here, where the purple arrow is, on August 4th, Amgen crossed below both the green 50 and red 200 moving average on the daily chart. Since then, it's been in a steady decline to the price that was at when it crossed those moving averages of 240 to where it closed at today, which is just above $200 per share. In all, Amgen has gone down almost $40 per share. 
The problem is that at the point the engine crossed over that moving average to the downside, we're actually short the 240 put option. That option went as deep in the money as $40 until it was finally assigned to us last month on November 17th. Now I know it could be a whole lot worse than this. It could have crashed 50% or even more, and it very well may keep going down. To the best of my knowledge, nothing has changed fundamentally with the company. So I'm still comfortable owning it, but the stock is down right now. But let me show you all the trades that we've done in Amgen. And as a result, what our cost basis is on these 100 shares that we now own. Now you see every single trade we've done so far in Amgen. As a result of all the put and cover call options that we've been selling, even though Amgen is trading right around $40 per share lower than the price that we were assigned the stock at, as you can see at the bottom right corner in the light blue shaded area, our cost basis is right at $200 per share. As a result, our cost basis is actually just over $2 per share lower than Amgen closed at today. There are two reasons why I wanted to show this position to you. The first is because it's gone against us in a pretty bad way. But the second is because I wanted to show you what we've been doing to raise cash on a position that's gone against us. Look, as option traders, as much as we may want to get 100% of our trades right, sometimes it's just not gonna happen. And sometimes the market's going to crash on us. Sometimes a virus is just gonna happen and the market might implode. Sometimes things are just going to happen and your positions are going to go against you. It's how you respond to those situations that determines whether or not you will be a successful option trader. If we had to try to roll this put option out each month, our cost basis wouldn't be anywhere close to $200 per share like it is now. So let me show you some of the things that we've been doing since the crash to decrease our cost basis and put cash into our pocket every single month in spite of Amgen being down in a pretty big way on us. Before Amgen was even assigned to us, notice at the purple rectangle that on August 20th, we began selling bearish call credit spreads to decrease our cost basis. Now we didn't get much for that, but we're able to pocket right at a dollar per share for that trade. Then you see again at the orange rectangles that we were able to collect a little bit more premium by selling another bearish call credit spread. Finally, at the bottom of the green box, once Amgen was assigned to us, notice that we sold extra call options to not only decrease our cost basis, but to put more cash flow into our pocket. Here you see that we are now in a covered call position because we own 100 shares of Amgen outright. However, we sold two of the January $230 call options. To cover us, just in case Amgen has a big price increase, we bought the same expiration day, the third Friday of January, 265 call option for 23 cents per share. Again, even though this position has gone against us in a pretty big way, we've still been able to consistently generate cash flow by selling options. Now that we own the stock, we're also lined up to receive a dividend when Amgen goes ex-dividend, most likely in February sometime. And it's a pretty nice dividend because you can see here, it should be right around $1.76 per share. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trade similar to the three I spoke about in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more of the tips and tricks that we use to consistently put cash flow into our pocket every single month by selling options, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.